Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Marvel Crisis Protocol for the channel and in today's 18 threat match we have the Brotherhood of Mutants going up against the A-Force in Asgard for some reason. With that let's go take a look at the sides. So we've got one new addition to the usual kind of lineup you'd expect for a Brotherhood of Mutants team. Uh, working with the 18 threat means only 4 miniatures although that's true for both sides. Being led by Magneto he'll be putting down his metal constructs one right at the start of the game and any time there's less than two when in the power phase they generate an extra power and his affiliation bonus generates power when things are thrown and destroyed. Joined by the blob to screen left, Sabretooth on the far side and the new addition is Shadow King, another very powerful miniature, Magneto's sixth threat, he's five threat I think. A very powerful mystic attacks, He's got some interesting uh, powers that he can do, and he also has an interesting tactics card, which is part of the five selected for the match. If we just pan down here ever so slightly, we've got Magnetic Crush, Magnetic Refraction, Astral Plane, which is the Shadow King one, a Brace for Impact with one of the various bits of art that exists for like the four different versions of that card now, and Exceptional Healing. Yes, there is a nerfed version of Exceptional he Healing coming, but until that new card pack is out in 2025, we're using the version that we have the card for. And as I mentioned, only four miniatures for the A-Force this time, being led by, of course, She-Hulk. Being joined by Spider-Woman, the newest version of Black Widow. There's three versions of her now. And also Gamora. Simple as that. We'll see how they get things done today, with the lion's share of the threat value also being taken up by She-Hulk, because she is also a sixth threat and the rest of them are fourth threat. The other tactics cards, which are slightly reflective from this angle, apologies. Joint Effort, Stalwart Determination, Brace for Impact, a different version, different art. Double Agent and A Force Assemble. And here's the two Crisis cards being played Mayor Fisk vows to find missing witnesses and Fear Grips the World as Worthy Terrorized Citizens, aka Hammers, which is also the threat value. So there's the four hammers, you gain one VP for each hammer held. They let you roll one extra attack die, but you also have to pay one extra before using any team tactics cards affecting or being used by the person with the hammer. And it's the two witnesses. This is the new version of this Crisis card, obviously. There's two menaces, each one is worth two VP if you're controlling them, and then in the cleanup phase they could scatter, run away, and deal one damage and stun to everybody within range one of it. So the hammers are amongst the trees here. We just pull back a little bit. One there, one there, one there, one behind the, the top of this dead tree there, and then the two witnesses are on either side of the dead tree in the center of the table. With that we'll get both sides deployed, roll for priority, and be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we are back with deployment done. The A-Force have one first activation and you can see on your screen right here where Magneto has set up his first metal construct within range 3 of himself. Forgot to mention when we're looking over the sides, just to, uh, this is the kind of theme for the A-Force team, with the exception of She-Hulk. The other three ladies all have long moves, so they're going to be trying to snatch up those hammers nice and quick, and they all have stealth. So that's the kind of theme they've got going. They're, they're trying to be sneaky. Magneto's uh, not exactly sneaky. As long as he doesn't get pushed back, he just loves trying to murder people. And Shadow King, I'm not sure. We'll just have to see. But in terms of deployment, if we just pull back a little bit more, we have Spider-Woman, She-Hulk, Gamora, and then Black Widow's hidden behind that building up there. To your right, we have, from bottom right to top right, Shadow King, Blob, Magneto, Sabretooth. With that, let's jump into round one and see how this plays out. Well, I'm sure you saw this first move happening, because no matter where Sabretooth set up, he was going to be opposing at least one other person that was as fast as him. He's the fastest person on the Brotherhood of Mutants team. He's the only long move. The rest are small, I think, or short. And that meant that if he wasn't going first, he was going to have an objective snatched out from under him that he was going to go for. So Black Widow, third iteration of her, activated, moved long, then moved a tiny bit as a second action, paid her one power she started with in the power phase, and took the hammer that Sabretooth was within easy range of. So with no hammer to go snatch because the one closest to the deployment is presumably held for Magneto, Sabretooth activated, moved long, then moved a little bit to go secure one of the missing witnesses, the one that is closest to Black Widow, and he's kind of nestled himself there such that the metal construct Magneto ma made is right behind them, and the tree's also kind of line of sight blocking from certain angles. 
Jessica Drew UK Spider-Woman activated and did the exact same thing as Black Widow more or less. Long move followed by just a tiny move as a second action. She however, because of this house here blocking line of sight and having to be moved around, uh, decided to move closer to the witness. She's not close enough to be contesting it or anything, she is close enough to help in the fight over there in round two. Thanks to that larger base size of his, the blob activated and two of the shortest movements ever still got him safely within one of the witness that Sabretooth did not go after. So currently the Brotherhood of Mutants are holding both and for a three threat he is pretty tanky. Second last activation for the A-Force, I keep on wanting to say A-Team, is uh, Gamora. She moved up and is contesting that witness against the blob leaving just She-Hulk to activate for them. And now it's over to either Magneto or Shadow King, both of whom larger bases but they move very slowly. Magneto activated, moved up small, paid one power to pick up the hammer that was closest to the Brotherhood's deployment zone, moved small again and ended up where you can see him. I think that's within one, so he's helping contest the witness, we'll need to measure that out carefully. Uh, it looks like it might just be out, we'll see. Then left She-Hulk for the A-Force, she moves medium, despite being on that same size base because she's a Hulk. She moved up to the far side of the last hammer to pick up, paid one of her two power, picked it up, then moved again. She had a choice, she could either contest the witness next to Sabretooth or let him have that one and secure the one she did decide to go after. Magneto is just out, so it isn't a draw there. The A-Force do have it, which means both sides are getting a point, but they're going to be ahead in the swing for hammers. So just trying to stay ahead points wise is the goal here rather than just denying one although ultimately it kind of works out the same either way so it's over to Shadow King to take us to a last activation of round one and unfortunately for Shadow King who I think is named Amir Farouk uh, after one short move neither Gamora or She-Hulk were within range three and that's because of a limitation of his builder is range three it's not just because of stealth because obviously She-Hulk does not have stealth so he just moved again a little bit with the Blob and Magneto in the way, he didn't really want to just clump up with them, so he's hanging back a little bit. That means if he wants to go help out Sabretooth next round, he still can from where he is. But yeah, didn't get much done this round. So then around one, after the cleanup phase in which the witnesses who were secured get moved by the opponent, we can cover the points. Let's go to the A-Force first. They secured three victory points for the Hammers. Black Widow, Spider-Woman, She-Hulk, they all have a Hammer, so that's three. And they secured the witness that was closest to your camera for another two, taking them to five. Because they secured that witness, it could be moved by the Brotherhood. It was actually moved ever so slightly closer to them, so that She-Hulk and Gamora were both within range one. And they take one damage. Actually, in order to make sure the blob is not included in that, he's gonna have to it's gonna have to be there. It might actually still hit him as well. We need to measure that. So he might also have one damage and or stun. I think he might be immune to stun either way. But one damage to She-Hulk and Gamora for sure. They're both susceptible to stun, so they have that. In terms of the Brotherhood, they have one hammer on Magneto, and they hold the other Witness with Sabretooth, so they only score three to the five, and the Witness that Sabretooth was securing has been moved away from him here, so it doesn't hurt anybody, but it's more in a more favorable position for the A-Force. So with that, let's go into round two. There might be one damage on Blob, we'll cover that then. So as we start round two, we've got a couple of things to cover. Magneto's other metal construct is up and it is there between She-Hulk and Spider-Woman. Also, you might notice that one of the witnesses is now haunted. There's a token on it. It's the one closest to your screen. That is because Astral Plane is being played. It's a power phase card for Shadow King. A lot of text. Costs him one. He had tons because he generates two in the power phase. During the power phase, Shadow King may spend one to play this card. Choose a secure objective token and place the Astral Incursion token on it. Enemy characters suffer one damage if they end their activation within one of the Astral Incursion. The rest doesn't matter since you can't interact with the witnesses, but it disappears during the cleanup phase. So the A-Force can by all means still try and hold that witness that's right next to them, but if they end their activation, activation within one of it, they're taking one guaranteed damage. So that's a handy thing for trying to just make them go after the other one, leave that one to the Brotherhood, or take the damage, which in its own way helps. So round two got started proper with She-Hulk, however, I did forget to mention um, the blob was within distance of the witness, so he did take one damage and has been stunned. He's not immune to it. Uh, anyway, she did a sensational uppercut into Magneto, managed to get him for two damage. Just generated herself one power, though, because of a stun, unfortunately. She did have enough power to clear the court, though, so she picked up the giant tree in the middle of the map and hocked it at Magneto's face. 
and then he had a choice, spend two power, which would let him use his six mystic defense to do the dodge, or just brace for one, and he opted for the latter. So their brace has been used up, which has the blob on it. Spend one, and you don't take any damage from the collision. So the tree is gone, opens up some sight lines, but, and that's a powerful card to get out of the way. That does mean she has ended her activation within one of the Haunted Witness though, so she's taking one damage as a result of Astral Plane. Oh, just as a matter of note, not forgetting the Brotherhood of Mutants affiliation bonus Magneto gives with that tree being destroyed and we count all these overly large trees as size 3. Uh, he gets to distribute power, he gave one to Sabertooth, Blob and Shadow King. I'm not going to mention it every single time, just mentioning it once so you know it is being done. First activation for the Brotherhood in round 2, we got to see what Shadow King can do. He started with his basic builder range 3, it's Mind Shackle, I think it's called Six Dice Mystic, and it does Root on a Wild, and after it's resolved, if it's done damage, you can advance the target small. He did that into Gamora, got her for 2 damage, then forced her to move with Mental Suggestion right here, applying Root. Then he spent on his Spender, I think it's 4, and it's called Astral Disintegration or Obliteration, something like that. It only starts with 5 or 6 dice, but then you add dice equal to how much power the target has up to a maximum of 5, and they're not allowed to modify or reroll defense dice. He did that into a bit of overkill if you ask me, it was only 8 dice as opposed to 6, but it did 4 damage, which is more than enough that she is dazed. That means uh, from her taking damage, the A-Force affiliation bonus kicks in, She-Hulk has gained 1 power. She was the only one not holding a hammer, so of all the targets to get and just kind of merc, that's probably the least bad, so you know, she won't be getting an activation this round though, and she isn't even sitting on that much power because she had stun. So now with limited options, Spider Woman activated and did her basic bioelectric strike into Magneto. He did not opt to use his Mystic Defense again, he's wanting that power for big attacks, so he managed to take two damage, which is fine. Um, that gave her two additional power to play with. She then, as her other actual action, moved long towards the other witness that isn't haunted, and then she spent two on I Don't Fly, I Glide to be placed within two, and has nestled herself between the witness and the Asgardian house over there. The Blob activated for the Brotherhood and had a pretty decent turn. He immediately spent on Thunderous Splash, is that what it's called? It's when he leaps and just crashes down. He gets placed within one of his target, who in this case was She-Hulk. Uh, seven dice, I think it was, physical. He managed to, uh, well, and it, after it's resolved, you push anyone within two of him away small. Uh, oh, it was a push, not a throw. So, never mind. There was not one extra damage that I was about to talk about. He did three damage with it, which is pretty good. And then he just tried to do a basic strike into her as her, uh, his other actual action and managed to not do anything. It was fully blocked. But, he pushed her away, so she's not currently contesting the haunted witness that she took one damage to try and stay next to got her pretty good for three damage and now he is currently the only one holding that witness magneto activated because the a-force passed they still had two activations the a-force only has one black widow so magneto was the one out of the two it was either him or sabertooth moved up small right into she hulk's face contesting the haunted witness and again it only hits enemies and he wanted to be within two of the big tree that was here and for his other actual action, he used Magnetic Crush. Six dice base, but he destroys any scenery within two of him. The big tree was within two, as was one of his metal constructs. So he threw in five extra dice on top of that. And he attacked She-Hulk. This was his big gambit to try and just get her closer to death. Because she doesn't flip her card, she just gets removed. And he managed to do four damage to her. While she's stunned as well, so she isn't even getting power generation out of this much. So, one extra power for her off of 4 damage. That's her up to 5. She's up to 9 damage over 20, I think. There or thereabouts. And Blob and Magneto are now comfortably holding that witness secure for the end of the phase. Oh, and of course, his affiliation bonus. As he destroys terrain, it kind of feeds back into the power. Although each character can only generate 1 per turn. So everybody got 1 power out of that on the Brotherhood side. So last activation of the second round for A-Force was Black Widow, moved along to where you can see her to help secure that witness with Spider-Woman, didn't really have a choice in that matter. Stayed within range 2 of Sabretooth to use her shock batons, mostly just to get a wild or to try for a wild to apply shock to him, but didn't get it. Managed to do one damage, which he's about to heal via healing factor when he activates as the final activation for the round. So there wasn't much Sabretooth needed to do, so he was already within range 2 of a target. So he just did two basic attacks into Black Widow, and 
At range 2, she has martial artists, so blank, blanks count as successful defences. And the first attack did nothing as a result of that. Even with him having Pierce, it just changes something to a blank, so it just changes a success to a success for her if she's uh, within range 2. Does bleed whether it does damage or not, though, so she is bleeding. Tried again, and she fully blocked it again. So, not so much impressed with this Black Widow, it's more just impressed with Hey Martial Artist was super insanely useful there. And that takes us to the end of round 2. So, at the end of round 2, here's how things stand for the A Force. They still have three hammers on the same three people Widow, She Hulk, Spider Woman, although She Hulk is getting a lot of damage. So, that's three gained there, and they still hold one of the witnesses. So, they gained another five, taking them to ten. The Brotherhood also gained the same amount. They have the other hammer on Magneto. Magneto was actually kind of close to dazing as well, but he held onto that hammer for one, and they held the other witness between him and the blob. So, they gained three, taking them to six. So, ten playing six. A4 still having first activation in round three. The witnesses moved, of course, though. This one was moved between the Blob and Magneto. They have each taken one damage, and Magneto is now also stunned. And the witness over here is hitting Spider Woman and Black Widow. It was moved ever so slightly just to be in a more advantageous position. One damage to each of them, and also stunned. So lots of limited power generation now. Also, Astral Plane goes away at the end of the round. As we start round 3, Magneto resummons that destroyed metal construct placed within three of them. It has been placed there, kind of close to Spider Woman and the Black Widow. So the sensational She Hulk, that's hard to say, sensational She Hulk, got the round started and she went hog wild. Started with a sensational uppercut into Magneto's chin, seven dice normal, normally rather, up to eight because of that hammer she's holding, of course. Walloped Magneto, who did pay to use his 6 Mystic Defense. Two damage got through, only one was required to daze him after the Witness damaged him for one. So he dazed, he dropped his hammer, which she paid to pick up. Then she paid 3 power, which was everything she had, for superior weight training. So that means the next attack she does, she adds dice to equal to the target size. And she went after the blob with another sensational uppercut. 7 dice base, plus 2 now because of holding 2 hammers, and plus 3 because he is size 3. So that was what, 12 dice? Something like that? She walloped into him, he paid for haha -ha, that tickles even though the damage would still be enough to daze him, which was 5 reduced down to 4, and that was just to bonk her away from the witness. So she's back here, that's why she's back here, he mitigates one damage and pushes them away small. So pushed her away back there, but she did manage to get a double daze in that turn, and that's real good. Now down to only two activations for the round, the Brotherhood opted to pass because the A-Force, almost said A-Team again, the A-Force have three activations. So they passed and Black Widow activated. She used her first action to shake her bleed and then she used her second to once again just do an attack into Sabretooth to try and get that shock on him just to reduce some damage. Uh, only managed to get one damage through which again he's going to heal when he activates and did not get that shock. Really wanted that to reduce his number of dice but... Maybe she'll go nuts with martial artist again, who knows. So for the Brotherhood of Mutants, Shadow King activated and he just wanted to remove Grimora off the table. Started by doing his big spender, 5 dice base but up to 5 extra dice based on how much power the target has for astral disintegration. And she had 5 power, so it was 10 dice against her and it was gonna do 9 damage. But she maxed out her defense roll of 3 dice with two crits, so she brought that nine dice, uh, sorry, nine damage down to four, which is incredible. It was not enough, sadly, because he then just did his basic attack and managed to get two Dunter, even though she spent on Martial Prowess to roll five dice instead of three that time after remembering that it was an option. Whoops. And it still wasn't good enough. She took two damage, so Gamora has been wiped off the table. Took Shadow King's whole activation, but now the numbers are more in favour of the Brotherhood next round. So second last activation for the A-Force of round 3, Spider Woman activated, moved long to where you can see her and for lack of anything better to do she just shook her stun. And she's over there to force Sabretooth to make a choice. He can obviously contest either one of the witnesses, can't contest both, so he has to pick who he wants to deny a point off of. And there is enough room for him at both, so yeah, it's just down to who he wants to go after. So Sabretooth opted to try and murder Black Widow again. Didn't want to go near the other witness because he'd have to be between Blob and Magneto and that's just asking for AOE damage or witness damage, etc. So he moved there after her, then did his Spender Savage Predator 7 dice physical into her 
and it wasn't that great of a roll. She fully blocked it, however, he did get the trigger for finisher, which let him do a free claw slash, which is just as basic. On top of that, so he technically did three actions, did that into her, she fully blocked that as well, So and it was mostly blanks. So, Martial Artist is just wrecking Sabretooth. At the end of his activation, he is, however, contesting that witness, so no one's scoring it, and he healed the one damage he had on himself. But that takes us to scoring. Well, this is a bit unexpected because I do feel like the Brotherhood are on the cusp of definitely winning the battle. But in terms of overall victory points, they've actually lost. And nothing that would have played out differently in that particular round would have changed that. Going by the score, four of the Hammers are in possession of the A-Force. Um, because Magneto lost his. Two of them are on She-Hulk, one is on Spider-Woman, one is on Black Widow. That gave them four, which took them to 14, and she secured one of the two witnesses. Sabretooth couldn't stop them both. The thing they shouldn't have done was just concentrate on murdering Gamora, as it turns out. If Shadow King had contested uh, and let Gamora have an activation, it might have been different, I guess. Although Gamora could then have just contested this, and it would have been two versus one, so no, it wouldn't have made a difference. So that does mean that they get to 16 on the dot. However, part of the reason Spider-Woman moved where she did is because in the cleanup phase she can spend three on Interrogate, which is just on her card, and I think the only, the only other person who has it is the second version of Black Widow. If she's within a dazed, or within two of a dazed character, you get plus one victory point. So that actually took them to 17 at the end of round three. For the Brotherhood, uh, they don't have any hammers, and they're only contesting a witness to stop that scoring. So they actually scored nothing and are ending on six. So they got absolutely trounced when it came to victory point gain there. As I say, they were definitely winning the battle, though She-Hulk has taken a lot of damage. Um, Magneto gets more tanky on his flipped side. Shadow King does a lot of damage, as it turns out. But that doesn't matter when it comes down to victory points at the end of the day. So that is going to do it for another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report for the channel. I guess this one's probably going to end up short because it was only three rounds long, but that's what happens when you let a side run away with the victory points. And you know, with hammers, it usually does end up going that way. Thank you for watching either way. If you are a channel member, which is one way to support the channel as a whole, you see certain series, series early, including this one. This video will be live to channel members a week early or so, give or take a couple of days. Or you can check out the channel sponsor via my affiliate link if you do so and pick up something for yourself, including Crisis Protocol, that's where I get Crisis Protocol from. I get compensated if you buy anything via that link. Although, just watching in general and leaving a comment, liking, subscribing, that all helps the channel as well in other free ways, which is also appreciated. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ta for now.